Heat rises from the hellish furnace. In shimmering, undulating waves, the flames tower high above the sprawling echo. A fiendish signal fire to the lost, drawing them inexplicably like moths to a flame, no doubt to be consumed by the searing heat, like mere kindling. Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This video, I've got another bit of terrain that I'm building for an Idols of Torment scenario. This time, for the Flames of Hell. Uh, it utilizes a six inch piece of terrain representing one of Hell's furnaces. Now, whether or not you're playing this game, uh, a fiery hellish pit is a great piece of terrain for all sorts of tabletop games, be it RPGs, or war games. Fairly simple build, but I did do something new uh, for the flames that I think worked out pretty well. I also did something that worked out very poorly, which I'm also gonna share with you. I needed a six inch base. This would give me quite a bit of room for some LED candles from the dollar store to use for some light effects. I arranged them in a circle and thought it would be easier to work with if I attached them together, which I did using hot glue. Quick side note, while I was filming this build, we kept getting power outages and that caused a corruption of some of my video files. And when I went back to record after the power had been restored, I didn't realize that it had screwed up the focus of my camera. So there's a couple clips that are blurry, but don't worry, it doesn't last long. And then we get back to normal. Like I said, I needed a six inch base, but didn't have any wood rounds that size. So instead I just cut a circle out of XPS foam with my hot wire cutter using a circle jig. I wanted to wrap the piece in some of this needlepoint mesh, but only had one piece on hand that wasn't long enough to wrap the whole circle. So I cut it in half, giving me two lower sections to use. This meant it wouldn't be tall enough to hide the LED candles, so I decided to embed them in the foam. Then I glued the plastic mesh around the edge of the foam. I wouldn't trust this glue bond on this particular plastic long term, but I planned to lock it all in with some other layers of foam. And rather than using some clean material strips to say represent metal or something like that, I thought it would look cooler to cut some jagged foam pieces to look like gnarly hellish stone. I really like the look of this. It sort of made it look like a hole had opened up in the ground of the Echo, raising these tooth-like pieces of broken stone to reveal the fiery pit. Now going into this build, I wasn't sure how I'd approach the aesthetic of the furnace that fit within the Echo, but I think this was a great way to go about it as it would pair well with a lot of the ruined rocky terrain that I use for the setting. I wanted an element of more grim hellishness, a bleaker look, not so fantasy based, but more inspired by the likes of Dante. The idea of this hellish furnace being decorated with the petrified forms of human souls seemed really cool. And since I have a bunch of production samples of our lost models, I could be a bit frivolous and use them to decorate the piece. Now, if I didn't have these plastic models, I could have 3D printed them in bulk, but I had them in plastic and they were ready to use. I like how it looked overall, but I thought the mesh looked too perfect. It needed to be more jagged and broken, so I cut it up to make it look more damaged and intimidating. Since I had done the assembly with hot glue, I had a bunch of those annoying stringy wisps all over the place that I wanted to remove before painting. To do this, I used a heat gun. Since this was meant to be a red hot fiery furnace, I wasn't concerned if in the process I melted any of the mesh or the foam rocks or even the models. Doing so would only add to the impression that this thing was really hot and actually melting the mesh specifically and allowing it to fold over and hang in parts made it look even cooler. Let's stop for a second and talk about this video sponsor, Into the AM. They make super sick graphic tees that are bright, vibrant, and very cool. But if you're more into a more muted, plain aesthetic, they also have their basic tees, which you can get both branded and unbranded if you just want a plain t-shirt that is soft and fits well and is comfy. They also offer these basic tees in great bundles, which is a very cost-effective way to bulk up your wardrobe with some daily wears. And they've recently introduced vintage tees. These are even softer and more comfortable than their basic tees. They have this great faded look to them. The graphics are distressed and they don't shrink in the wash. Very nice. 
You've got a bunch of worn out, ill-fitting t-shirts in your wardrobe with maybe crappy graphics or whatever. I suggest you check out Into the AM, stock up, get some great fitting tees for a great price. And if you're gonna go buy some of these sexy tees, which I suggest you do, use the link in my description to get there so that you get an extra 10% off your entire order. Into the AM rocks, love their shirts, highly recommend them. Before painting, I primed it with some flat black aerosol primer. This is just a bit more convenient than using the airbrush. And I trust the primer made for plastic, a little bit more on that oily plastic mesh that nothing likes to stick to. I did break out the airbrush at this point to Zenithal highlight everything with some white ink. And because it was a fiery pit, I went to work tinting the piece with some red and yellow inks to try and build up a look of glowing heat. I've never been that great at painting fiery hot terrain, but I've also never been one to shy away from things that I'm not good at. So I just gave her and hoped for the best. I didn't think the ink alone looked that good though, so I experimented with some traditional airbrush acrylic paints that were more opaque rather than translucent. Starting with some molten orange around the edges where the mesh met the rock. And I could see that this approach was a bit better, so I moved on to some more yellow and continued highlighting with that. This yellow turned out to be more of an off-white though. It didn't really read as the reflection of fire. I'm gonna have to remember this color for future because it would be a great creamy white for highlighting. To bring in some vibrant yellow color, I decided to try to go over things with some Citadel Contrast paint. And this is the point where it should be clear that I was winging it. I used ink, then some acrylic paint, <laughs> then some contrast paint in several steps to get to a spot I'm betting I could have gotten to with just a zenithal highlight and some contrast paint. But that's okay. What matters is that I got to a point that I was feeling all right with in the end. I was already starting to think about how I'd cover the LED candles and do the flames. It's one thing to make a small flame on a model, but doing a huge fire is a whole other challenge. While well, looking around my basement for something to use, I came across some of that awful Halloween spider web decoration. I hate this stuff, but I thought it might make for good flames. I needed to dye it now so that it would be dry and ready to use as soon as possible. I dribbled on some water and ink and quickly realized that it would not work to saturate it at all. So instead Instead, I mixed up some clear matte varnish and ink that I could then sop up with the webbing. The idea of using the varnish was that since this mesh was plastic, it wouldn't really absorb water or dye. But if I used varnish, it would hopefully dry on top, coating the plastic to make it yellow and maybe even a little stiffer, which would make it easier to create flame shapes with. That was my theory. As soon as I laid it out to dry, I knew it probably wouldn't work very well. It just didn't want to make the right shapes. I don't really know how to describe why it was wrong, but I knew it was wrong and I didn't want to wait for it to dry to confirm my suspicions that it wouldn't work. So I immediately set myself up with a plan B. I did the exact same thing, but this time using cotton balls. The hope was that these would be less stringy and easier to form into flames. I tried to pull them apart a bit so that they dry faster, but inevitably I'd have to just wait a little bit for them to dry out. In the meantime, I could continue painting the main piece. If you watched my last video building the stronghold, you will have seen my amazing discovery of pan pastels. Oh, my new favorite painting tool. I absolutely love them. They let you do something like dry brushing, but way easier and better looking. They tint and highlight in such a wonderful way. You never accidentally streak on wet paint and they naturally give a bit of a dusty look to things. Even better is that they seem to bond to surfaces really well, unlike pigment powder that just wants to rub off when touched. I highly recommend you try these out. I got mine at a local art supply store, but I checked and they are also available on Amazon, so I'll leave a link to them in the video description so you can see what they're all about. To diffuse the light a little bit and tint it more, I cut a circle out of clear orange plastic. Again, these are sheets you can buy online. I wanted to see if I could melt the plastic with the heat gun to form over the candles. I thought this would be really clever, but it didn't work. It just wanted to curl upwards instead of sagging down around the candles like I wanted, but it was worth a shot. In the end, I just hot glued it to the candles. Originally, I was gonna keep these candles removable, but 
since I would need to glue all of the flames to the surface, I realized that they should be locked into place. This was fine as the batteries would still be accessible underneath to be changed when needed. They weren't a very tight fit because I had planned on them being easily removable. So I slathered the whole surface in some clear silicone caulking to glue it in place. Now, normally I wouldn't want to wait for that to dry, but I was stuck waiting for the cotton balls to dry anyway, so it didn't matter. Surprisingly, the cotton didn't take that long to dry enough to the point where I could start pulling, shaping, and attaching it. I can't say that this was a quick task, Doing one little tuft at a time was certainly a bit of an ordeal, but it looked decent. So I was content to see it through. And eventually I got all the candles covered, making a big fiery circle in the middle, but not covering the entire area. I was seeing that the LED candles weren't bright enough to really illuminate the cotton. And if I filled right to the edges, it would add this border of cotton that had no light underneath it that would make it so that you definitely couldn't see any flickering from the LEDs. So to cover the rest of the area, I instead used a bunch of glue and dumped on some rubble and sand. The idea being that this would create uh, coal or hot stones around the flame. And I'm happy with this idea. I, th I think it was a good choice. I went back with an airbrush and painted out that rubble black, then added some oranges and reds. And that was it, it was done. Now the candles aren't as bright as I would like. You really can't see them under studio lights, but in a normal gaming environment, they do add a little bit of a nice flickering effect. This would look great with a proper light inside it, something much brighter. At the same time, I think the cotton flames look cool enough on their own that you don't actually need a light source. And if you wanna build a bunch of fiery terrain effects for a board, this is a good way to go. Now, if I decide that I want this to light up a lot better, I'll probably just rip out these candles from the bottom uh, and use a light like this, which is much brighter. I don't have to attach it in place, just sit it on top. I mean, look, actually that looks pretty good, even just like that. Just pretend I, I used a really bright light and it will <laughs> look better. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit the like button let me know in the comments section below share this video with some friends if you want to check out idols of torment the pdf rules and stl files are available now go to idolsoftorment.com to see where you can buy them if you want to grab some tools or supplies be sure to check out my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca and lastly if you want to help me make these videos you want to support my channel in the best way possible you can do that by joining the black magic craft fellowship on patreon i'd love to see you there that's it. That's all. Love you. See you next time. Cheers. Hot. It's real hot. Oh, lights are hot.